Hey guys, Fregner22 here, and welcome back to a new installment of At The Movies. As I had mentioned in my Season 2 finale of Saturday Night Movie Drive-In, where I reviewed uh, Wes Craven's 1984 classic, A Nightmare on Elm Street, I mentioned that a week from uh, that video I would be going to see the 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I just got back from it, so I'm ready to give you guys my review on the 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, for any of you guys that actually caught uh, my review of the original film, all you guys know by this point that it was actually the original film was actually the first film I ever saw and it definitely ranks up as probably my my favorite horror movie of all time so I'm sure a lot of people's you know um view you know thoughts on like what my opinions would be on the remake must be a uh, you know kind of interesting because uh for anybody that puts uh, the original Elm Street on such a high stature I mean hearing that like one of your you know beloved movies is being remade must probably take a toll on you but I'm just kind of in the mindset that I just know that anything's you know anything and everything is going to be remade you know just like 3D is the big thing now remakes are hot and they're going to be hot for a long time they're not going anywhere so really my only hope that if a remake is going to go into production, all I can hope for is that they just don't incredibly, you know, fuck it up completely. That's all I can hope for, because what the fuck am I going to do to ever stop these things? Nothing. So, may as well just hope for the best and, you know, hopefully see the movie and get a good, uh, you know, viewing experience out of it. So, uh, walking into A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, you know, seeing the trailers and all the news coming over the times, and especially um, the casting of Jack Earl Haley as Freddy Krueger, um, things were looking pretty good, and I actually was going on the record saying that this film actually had the potential potential to be the best remake that Platinum Dunes has ever produced so far. Well, after coming out of it, um, I have to say that it actually was a pretty decent movie. It's nothing incredible by any means, but it certainly is a decent movie overall. So let's go ahead and get into, uh, you know, the details of uh, this film. So, basically it kind of takes, uh, takes the plot of the original and just more or less just updates it. There's really nothing incredibly new added to the plot of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the only major thing that's really implemented in this is that there's kind of a subplot um, revolving around, um, you know, the possibility of was Freddy Krueger truly innocent? Was he abusing children or, uh, you know, was he actually innocent uh, overall? So there's a little bit of a mystery subplot in there that the characters kind of go... Uh, trying to uncover the truth. So I guess in that sense, that was uh, somewhat interesting. So that was really the major difference in anything um, added to the plot. Um, you know, the cast in this, it, this was the thing about this movie. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to talk about the cast next. Uh, I want to talk about how the movie actually opened. Um, the opening title sequence is kind of interesting. I mean, you see everybody's name and stuff written on chalk, and, you know, just you just see quick cuts of, you know, jump rope girls and, you know, building blocks and fire and stuff. So, immediately watching this, you're just, you know, my feel was, Jesus Christ, this director Samuel Bayer just fucking is living off the fumes of that fucking Smells Like Teen Spirit video. I mean, this guy just loves that grunge aesthetic, and I mean, you know, some people, I'm sure, aren't going to really approve of that opening title, but personally, I kind of dug it. I kind of, I liked what was visually going on, and so I think it kind of set a pretty cool tone for it. Um, you know, moving on, like I said, you know, the plot is pretty much the same as the original, aside from that, you know, somewhat of a mystery subplot thrown in for good measure, but the thing that was a little bit of the deal-breaker on this was the cast. The cast that was headlined by Rooney Mare, who took over, um, Heather Langenkamp's role of Nancy, um, alongside, uh, Thomas Decker and, uh, Kyle Gallner, um, uh, who was actually in uh, The Haunting in Connecticut. You know, it's just the cast, I mean, it's just these kids are just too pretty, and I've just pretty much come to, you know, I've just pretty much come to the conclusion that these young actors just are useless. I mean, they really don't have great acting chops. They're just way too pretty. They just, you know, capture this millennium-looking feel that I just can't, you know, I just can't get that out of my head when I'm trying to watch these movies. And I mean, you know, when you're comparing, comparing the acting talents, um, you know, from you know, to, like, the original films that these films are based on, these, you know, the, the actors from the 80s and stuff like that, sure, their acting wasn't great, but there was a, you know, there was an honest, real gravity and sincerity that came through their performances. I mean, these people, you can just tell that they're acting, they're putting on tears, they're putting on screams, so it's really, they're just not the most effectful, act, you know, effective actors in the world, so, I mean, that was somewhat of a deal-breaker for me. Now, moving on to the, probably the biggest thing about this, Jackie Earl Haley's performance of Freddy Krueger. Now, 
For hardcore Elm Street fans, there will only be one Freddy Krueger, and that is Robert England, and I absolutely support that. No one could really, truly take over the reins of Robert. But, uh, you know, if, if I always said from the beginning, if they had to recast Freddy and they were choosing to go down that route, I would have chose Jackie Earl Haley. So overall, um, I liked what they did with him. I mean, I think that he wasn't, you know, of course he wasn't better than uh, Robert England, but he did the role good. I mean, this version really made Freddy dirty and gritty and, you know, for lack of a better word, they made him a fucking pervert, which is exactly what you would expect from a movie that's trying to bring Freddy back to his darker roots. Because if many of you guys recall, at the time when Wes Craven originally, you know, you know, formulated um, the idea for A Nightmare on Elm Street, the whole idea was to make him a child molester. But of course, you know, at that time uh, in the world, I think they were getting a lot of, you know, har you know, Wes was getting a lot of harsh criticism, so he changed it to just simply a child murderer. So, you know, in the new version, they really pushed that envelope that he was, you know, a, a, you know, he obviously was a, or is murdering these kids but you know before um he was burned by the parents in Springwood he, it was you know due to his crimes of being a child molester child molester and i think that just adds um to the character of freddy in this one it definitely gives him a depth um you know jack Earl haley's performance you know he definitely uh, made this role his own. The The makeup design isn't really fantastic. I mean, there's some cool things about it, but I mean, it's just the eyes that really kill it for me. I mean, they really went with a really realistic tone. Uh, you know, they obviously based, from what I read uh, fr um, with various interviews with the director, Samuel Bayer, Freddy Krueger's makeup, this is actually based on a real burn victim that they... Um, I guess found in a book or net or something like that, but it's really the eyes on the makeup that really kill it for me. You know, Jack Earl Haley just kind of looks like a fucking newt in it, um, so that's the only kind of real damper about the makeup. But um, you know, overall, this film was pretty decent, and you know, it's just the it's really the film really packs a punch and really saves itself from being just you know kind of a shitty movie overall in the third act. That's really when shit really starts flying and things just get really really good. My favorite scene in the whole movie uh, takes place in a drugstore when um, Kyle Gallner's uh, character is trying to refill drugs. I'm not going to give anything away because I don't want to overhype the scene for anybody out there, but uh, you know, when you see it, I would really like to get people's opinions on what they thought of that scene because up to the scene in the drugstore, down to the end credits, it's that third act that really packs a punch and just, you know, the feel, the atmosphere, and the energy that you get from that third act is, is, is exactly what, you know, the whole movie should have been. It's just, you know, like I said, it's really the, the young cast that really brings this film down. Um, you know, from the first through the second act. So, I mean, it's that third act, you know, they're, you know, the first half of the movie is no, really nothing special, but, you know, if you can hold tight, you're going to be really happy that you did uh, once that third act kicks in, because it really is something cool, something special. Some of the best Elm Street moments, I think, that um, have ever been uh, put to film in the franchise. So that's saying a lot. It's really, really cool. Um, you know, there's minor things being, you know, a hardcore Elm Street fan that I would have liked. I mean, the Elm Street house that Nancy lives in, it's just not really iconic. It's a very bland-looking house. I mean, if there's anything that they were going to do again... They should have just kept and, you know, used the exact same house or just built something that looked exactly like it. Because I just, you know, that house is so iconic, you know. They went, you know, the distance to try and use iconic scenes from the original, such as, uh, you know, the famous bathtub scene and, of course, the scene where Freddy's over, uh, you know, um, the ceiling and pushes through and stuff. Although in this version, it looks fucking atrocious. It's really CG happy and it looks like shit. As does a lot of um, the gore in this, uh, they kind of went a little out there with uh, CG blood, and I know real horror fans and, you know, a lot of people that just appreciate film in general are really getting sick of that bullshit. Just whatever happened to practical blood effects, it worked in the 80s, and it looks the best, so I don't know why people choose the route to, you know, do st stuff in CG. It never looks good. You can always tell it looks fucking fake, so that's something that kind of, sort of pissed me off, but, uh, you know, it was, it was just kind of minor things like that, I mean, just, you know, if they would have kept the look of the original house, and really just used more practical effects and more real blood, it would have high, it would have gone a long way, and just would have looked better looking, because, I mean, it's, it's, to be quite frankly, to be quite frank, it looks, uh, pretty laughable at times, so that's, uh, 
kind of shitty, but but overall, this film is a pretty decent viewing experience. I would give it a 6 out of 10 overall, but before coming to the third act during the movie, I would have been happy giving this a 5 out of 10, but it's really that third act that saves the movie from just being another forgettable horror movie. So, absolutely check this film out and support A Nightmare on Elm Street, because it's just always good to see Freddy back on the big screen. As always, guys, thanks again for tuning in to my At The Movies reviews. This is Frightener22.